Hi, my name is Lars Bergstrom, and I'm here with my colleague, Jeff Hamilton, to talk about AOSP first development. So today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about why you would develop out in the public and in the open rather than internally, um, and then dive in a little bit on how the external collaborations are enabled for my teams. Then I'll hand off to my colleague, Jeff, to talk about updatability. So we really try on the Android platform team to do almost all of our feature development in AOSP first. There are some things that don't get developed. There are still some teams that are in transition or there are things like security fixes that need to be done internally and privately before they can be shared out. But even in those cases, we try to make sure that when a new Android dessert release comes out uh, within 48 hours, we have the fully updated source uh, available to everyone so that they can see it and, and build it themselves. Now, why do that, right? Developing in the public is hard. It opens you up to scrutiny. There are additional conversations. But really, for us, there are four big reasons that, that we like to do our development in AOSP first. So the first one is transparency. One of our big promises to Android developers and Android users is that this is a secure and private operating system. And it's hard to believe those claims unless you can actually see the source code, see the compilers, test them out, see how we're building it. Look at all of the different memory sanitizers that we're using, the languages that we're using to sort of audit which pieces are being implemented in memory safe languages like Java or Rust, which of them are being implemented in C++. The second big piece is around reviews. When we make our changes in the open, it gives the opportunity for other people to take a look, provide feedback, um, and do so much earlier than they would be able to if we just released all of the code as a source dump once a year. So this basically allows us to get that feedback when there's still time to edit what's going on, to change the course and, and make updates to the system. The third big piece is collaboration. So uh, we don't build Android alone. We rely on a lot of third-party code. We also work with a lot of partners out in open source, whether those are corporations, foundations, or even individuals who like to participate in, uh, in the Android project and its work. And I'll leave uh, updatability to Jeff when, when he talks a little bit later. Open source is at the heart of everything that we do, and not just the portion of the 100 million lines or so of Android code that we write, but also the 75% of that that is upstream projects, so other open source projects that we contribute to and that we use within Android. And so this basically, by working upstream with those projects and have it working in the open, we can work directly with the upstream versions of those projects. If we had private branches of all of our code, then we would also have to have private branches of all of those open source projects, because any change that we were making internally, we would not be able to reflect externally without disclosing private information. So really, by working in the open for AOSP, this also enables us to work in the open with all of our partners and all of the other open source projects that we critically rely on. So one of my teams is the Native Tools and Libraries team. And basically what they work on are not just the compilers, not just the C++ and Rust compilers, but also things like the LLVM tool chain, which includes not only the code generators, but also all of the, all of the stuff that tidies up the code, that, that lints to check for errors in the code, or even the debuggers that work directly against the compiled code. We have hundreds of libraries that, that we bring in, including our memory allocators. For example, JE malloc, which we use on devices that have a little bit less memory, or Scudu, the, the hardened allocator that uh, we use on devices that have more memory. And there are profilers and performance tooling that are used not only by platform developers, but also by application programmers, whether directly from the command line or through Android Studio uh, that enable analysis of the programs and the system uh, to determine if whether resources are being used well. And so all of these require not just kind of collaborating within our, our teams themselves at here at Google, but also with all of our partners. So 
when someone like ARM adds a new instruction, for example, uh, instruction retired counters, um, that has to be plumbed all the way through all of the infrastructure. So basically adding support to the profilers to be able to trigger it and track it to all of our performance reporting tooling so that people can see and correlate this with other work. And if we had internal branches um, because of all of the legal stuff that we would have to get in place for, for that sort of private coordination, they wouldn't be able to see each other's work. So we would be managing these patches where ARM has added some set of features and our SOC partners might have added, added some other features. And then even our OEM partners might have added some and we would have to manage all of these patches and who knows whether they work together or how we make all of this uh, sort of come together at the end before we actually ship a dessert release. So it enables us not just to work well with, with other people, but for them to bring in and work uh, across with one another as well. Another thing that this allows us to do is not just work sort of on our own internal Android projects, but also to work more upstream directly with the projects that we rely on. So Android runs on top of Linux, um, uses the SC Linux uh, secure, uh, secure hardened uh, version in, in order to execute Android programs. Um, and one of the hard things there is that both the the compilers that are used to compile Linux as well as Linux itself move very, very rapidly. But by working in the open, what this enables us to do is take our source code and our tests and run them all the way upstream. So directly where people are contributing changes to the compiler or to the, uh, or to the operating system itself and run our tests as those changes are coming in to make sure, was there a regression? Did something break Android? Is there something that's no longer uh, optimized anymore? If we didn't do that, if all of our code was internal and we just consumed these projects, we might not know for days or even weeks when a regression happened. And because these projects move so rapidly, even if we identify the regression and then identify a fix, the code has probably continued to change substantially. So now we're chasing a running target, as they say, to try and get this code changed and a fix landed when a lot of new code may have landed that, that causes that to be really difficult. And so by working directly upstream, this enables us to uh, rapidly turn around fixes and be better partners to those projects. No surprises. We can show them exactly what broke, exactly what we needed to fix, um, and uh, you know, or change our tests to make sure that, that to adopt to the new behavior. This team also produces a set of development kits. So basically the tools that end developers use in order to uh, produce their applications. And so beyond even the source code that we make, we also make all of these packages, all of these binaries available because not every developer has a 96 core machine and a, and a ton of disk space in order to build all of Android so that they can see a new version of the compiler. Um, but they do have the ability to just plug in all of the new builds based on AOSP to check out these new compilers and tools to see if there are either new features that they want to use, new APIs they want to target, or, or just new compiler uh, issues that they want to track down. So we just got a bug on our GitHub issue tracker for the NDK that identified a compiler regression. In one case, we, were, uh, we, we used to be generating some really good optimized neon code for ARM in one case, and now it doesn't. And, now, we don't have access to any of this code, right? This is third-party code, but um, they can give us some repros and we can try and turn around a fix, whether that's directly in Android or whether that's upstream with LLVM and the rest of the compilers, um, and then push out those binaries and ask them to give it a try again. This is something that if we just had closed source development and we just had beta releases, it would be really hard to perform this sort of rapid iteration with our community. Our community developers also tends to have access to a much wider set of hardware, including early access hardware, uh, that we might not have access to at Google. So um, specific configurations of Windows, such as the Insider builds, they might be working right on, on new ones there. Also the new M1 ARM Max, we didn't have access to those for quite a while. And so we were able to get feedback from our community about how our tools were working on those in terms of either performance or functionality and iterate with them even before we have access to that hardware. So that's another thing that AOSP lets us do that we really wouldn't be able to if they were, if we were doing all of our work inside of internal private branches. And so the last thing on my team that I wanted to talk about is the Android runtime. So ART is the managed runtime that's used by applications in almost every system service on Android. Um, you're probably familiar with it because this is what all of the Java and Kotlin code directly target. 
Um, but what many people don't realize is that this runtime is used by every native application in order to make system calls, in order to get intents or, or activations. It all comes in through this runtime. Um, and so like native code, this allows our partners and, and the broader ecosystem to see what's coming. So right now we're working on a new garbage collector, which is the, which is the part of the runtime that manages and reclaims memory and allocation. So uh, this tends to have a pretty high impact on, on user programs. So uh, it's really nice to be able to share this early with them so that everyone can see how it runs, not only with their application, but on a different set of devices um, with different memory configurations and different sets of services running um, to make sure that it really runs well for everybody. Um, also, one of the differences about the Android runtime compared to the native tools is that for the native tools, you you build your binary once for every 64-bit ARM device, and that's the that's the binary that we're going to ship to every single device. Art is going to generate code on a specific device, so there are opportunities for uh, our partners to come in and say that ARM wants to do a particular optimization for. Uh, the only devices that have ARM v8.2 available, this gives them the opportunity to, gener to generate better code that has specific optimizations. So I, my team tends to focus more on the broad ecosystem, making sure that the, the broad set of 3 billion devices ac across Android generally work really well and safely and in, in a high performance manner. But some of our partners may want to do specific fixes for individual devices or individual chipsets or or even new things that are coming out that are not yet widely adopted. And by working upstream in AOSP, this, this allows them to actively collaborate and land and test those fixes without having to do so um, behind internal branches where where none of our, our community could actually try it out and see how it works in practice. So now I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Jeff Hamilton, who will talk with you about improving Android updates through AOSP. Thanks, Lars. Uh, I'm Jeff Hamilton, and I run the Project Mainline group within Android. And I'm here to talk to you today about how Mainline and works well with AOSP and uh, AOSP helps us out with our development. So first, let's talk about what is Project Mainline. Uh, it's a program to modularize the core components of the AOSP platform and to update them via Google Play. Uh, so some good examples are Art, the runtime that Lars uh, talked about a few slides ago. Um, we also have portions of the media system. Uh, we have things like time zone databases, so uh, your device always knows what time it is if the governments are changing that on you. Um, we also have things like ADBD to make sure there's a single implementation for developers across the ecosystem, and uh, they should be able to debug all the devices without problems. As we're modularizing these core components of AOSP, um, a really important aspect of that for us is that the code for the modules remains in AOSP, remains open source. Um, these modules are built by Google. Uh, they're built from the sources that are published in AOSP. Uh, so that allows you to inspect the code for the binaries that are running on your devices. Um, not all devices in the ecosystem are getting regular platform security updates. Uh, so with Mainline, we're able to reach a lot of users that are on you know, older devices that might not be getting software updates anymore. Uh, and the security updates that are delivered you know, more broadly um, and more quickly to users as they go through Google Play. Um, and the module updates are also delivered to, you know, to all devices that have uh, those modules included on them, regardless of manufacturer. Okay, so what are mainline modules? Um, an important aspect, as I mentioned before, is they're still open source as part of AOSP. Um, the modules are built against stable APIs, and we run them through uh, an extensive testing and validation process before we release them. Um, the, the, test, the automated tests as part of that process are included with the source code for the modules in AOSP as, as well. Uh, so if you find a problem in one of the modules, uh, you know, we encourage you to write a new test that shows that problem and, and submit it to us, and we'll take a look and fix the bug and get the test running again. Another important aspect of you know, modules is that they're developed by many members of the Android ecosystem. Uh, and it's not just Google participating. Uh, as Google's you know, delivering these updates to all devices, uh, we have many manufacturers that are contributing to make sure that you know, they have the features in, that they need for their uh, devices. The modules are also delivered atomically out to devices. So we ensure that the combination of binaries that went through our testing validation suites, is that's exactly what's installed on the device. So you don't end up with 
different versions of different modules installed that weren't tested together. Uh, the modules are also moving towards their own branches, um, which allows you to more easily download and inspect the source code. Uh, right now, the modules are kind of part of the full Android platform, and uh, that requires downloading a lot more source and, and having a lot more than you need if you're just looking at a single individual module. As the modules become kind of more distinct from the Android platform, uh, it's, you know, I want to talk about the release cadence there. And Android as the platform, you know, has one big, large annual uh, dessert release. Um, and there are monthly security updates that do happen through AOSP and, and are delivered to devices. Um, as the mainline modules, the updates often carry security patches. Um, we have aligned the updates that we're doing and uh, with those monthly security patches to make sure that uh, the updates go out at the same time as uh, the, the full platform updates go to devices and uh, to also make sure that we don't uh, end up releasing the source code for either the platform or for the modules in a way uh, that you know, kind of discloses a security vulnerability in one but not the other. Um, the modules also uh, have release branches that are uh, tagged in AOSP. So um, you can go in and, and you know, get exactly the code that's running on the device. So this kind of raises the question, what is AOSP? Um, it's often used interchangeably to talk about the set of Git repositories uh, that are hosting uh, the stuff. It's also used to talk about the platform itself and you know, the operating system that is Android. Um, and that you know gets a little bit confusing um, as as we move to modules. You know they're both part of part of the Android platform, as uh, you know they uh, they contain really important aspects of it, like the runtime. Um, but they are developed on their own schedules and released independently, both as binaries and as source code. We do release the source code to the AOSP Git repositories, but that does often happen at a different time as the Android platform. Um, so as we're talking about AOSP here, you know, there's kind of a, a bit of an evolution that's happening as we're separating out the modules. Um, AOSP kind of becomes a place to host uh, the modules as well as the rest of the, the uh, platform that's not been modularized. Uh, we are working on separating out uh, the branches, so it's much easier for you to get modules if that's what you're interested in, um, and you don't have to download a branch that has the entire platform. So tying it all together, what's the impact of this new updatability capabilities that we have? And you know, how does AOSP help out there? Uh, for users, many users will receive security updates on a more regular basis. If the device is receiving, uh, say, quarterly updates, or maybe some devices don't receive security updates at all, uh, for the code that's in the mainline modules, users will get monthly updates um, with the latest security patches. Uh, having a single binary across the ecosystem also helps reduce fragmentation. Um, and reduced fragmentation is really nice because it should reduce the compatibility workload on app developers. For example, they don't have to worry if class loading works differently on one device to the next. Uh, the runtime should be the same everywhere, and uh, they only have to worry about one, implement imp one implementation of the runtime. Uh, the source code for modules does continue to remain part of AOSP, which does allow uh, people to download the source code and inspect exactly the code that was used to build the binaries running on their devices. Uh, and last but not least, uh, the AOSP code, as it's being delivered to the entire ecosystem, uh, is now meeting all the requirements for all devices in the ecosystem. So there might be some devices that you know, had additional features in certain areas. Um, now, with a single implementation uh, that meets all the requirements for all devices uh, and make sure that you know, the code that is in AOSP is really production ready for everyone. And that's all we have. So thank you everyone for joining. Thank you.